So my name is Felicia and I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer in October of 2003. My name is Vicki and I'm a caregiver for Felicia. I'm not sure how many years I've been doing this. I've known her ever since she was a teenager. So I've always been in her life. As a caregiver, we also have to think about ourselves. So there, Felicia might not know this, but there may be times if Felicia's calling me, I really can't answer at that time because I could be going through something. But when I am mentally and physically and emotionally and spiritually prepared, I'm calling her and I'm giving her what it is that I can give. So I give what I can give in a positive way. And when I can't give it to her like that, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna call and be like, Felicia, really, you know, why you, I don't wanna give her that. So sometimes I have to like, like pull back on my like um, availability to her. And I don't feel bad because she has a big, big, big support group. So I know if she can't reach me, there's somebody else that mm -hmm. she's gonna be able to reach and ultimately she knows I'll get back to her. Mm -hmm. And she knows me well enough to know like, wow, you know, um, I'll hear from her later, mm -hmm. you know. So the nice thing about a long distance caregiver is, is this, the availability of those midnight calls. Those, some, it's the night sometimes that's the most difficult. When I remember I couldn't get up, couldn't eat, couldn't do anything, and I didn't want to disturb, disturb um, my son at all. So I knew that I could dial Vicki and I knew she was gonna answer the phone and I knew that I could say what was going on inside of me. And sometimes the best conversation is the silent conversation where you're crying and they're listening to your tears. So that's the added bonus in having someone that's, that's miles and miles away from you. That phone call is powerful. Well, for me, it's, it's hard because I'm there to provide support. So I want to ensure that what I'm saying, when I'm saying it, is always the right thing. And you, you know, it's not always gonna be the right thing, but I just have to try, and, and it gets hard because, you know, the one wrong word can, you know, just, you know, be spiraling down the, <laughs> <laughs> can just make it worse. So it, it's really hard to know um, and to be able to always be able to say the right thing at the right time. So, oh, that's true too. Uh -huh. So as the patient, it's very hard to be sensitive you have to have a sensibility about your caregivers, and that's very hard when you have um, this type of disease. So for me, that's been a learning process to realize that I'm the patient, they're my family member, my caregiver, they're doing everything they can for me. I don't misappropriate the time and energy that they're really pouring into me and realize that in this disease process, they may not understand everything, because clearly I don't, mm -hmm. but they haven't abandoned me and they're still on the team. You have to give them a plus for that. Right? Yes. <laughs> I want a plus for that. I'm on a team. I'm a team player. <laughs> you have to. You take yeah. the good with the ugly. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard taking the ugly. And it's okay for you to need your space. You know what I mean? We give you your space. We, we don't give you too much because we don't want you to go into isolation. Right. Because it really gets to be a thin line between is she going into depression or is she just really having a bad moment? So we play a lot of different roles. We're the psychiatrist, we're, we're the nurse, we're the, or the dietitian. We're like so many things, but we're also family. So the lines can become blurry but because we've known each other for so long, because there's so many of us, and um, not only am I the caregiver for her, but the other caregivers 
we're caregivers for one another. So it's like a big caregiving cycle of people right. um, caring for right. Felicia in her time of need. So that's what it's all about. You, you know what's, what's funny about being a caregiver? It's not like one of those things you do where you have a resume and you've gone to college and you've learned the skill and you, it's in you. Either you got it or you don't. And a lot of us, when we need somebody to care for us, we pretty much know who's the ones that are really, really, really good at it.